guys, in the fast lane here, and today I'm gonna be charging my AC system with this dust off. It's just uh, aerosol duster, blows air, clean your computers off. Well, what it really has in it is it has a uh, diflora thing, and that's a, like a R150 something refrigerant, and it gets colder than R12. So I'm gonna pull out this R134A, and we're gonna put in this uh, dust off. Now the tool I'm gonna be using is uh, it's cold powder, you can get it at Napa. It's a uh, side can tap. Basically, you squeeze it into the side of the can without taking off the cap. And then it has two R12 and R134A fitting, and it also has an extension so it can change different size cans. This dust stuff right here, you can get it at Walmart. And it's, uh, I believe, $12.97 for 30 ounces. Now, if you were to buy 30 ounces, you can buy a 20 ounce can with one of those little gauges on there for $36 at Walmart. So that's a huge difference. Anyhow, so here's what you're looking for. You want to look for this Diflora thing. It's a case number 75-37-6. But really all you're looking for is Diflora thing. Also this part right here, I get it at Napa. Part number 78-1009. It's cold power, it's just a side can tap. Like I said, I'll show you here just in a second how it works. Okay, so I have R134A, the EnviroSafe refrigerant in here. So I can release in the atmosphere, it's not illegal. <clears throat> so the first thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna hook up our AC lines. Might need to get some vice grips or pliers. Sometimes they're on there pretty good. gonna put it on there just pull up on the clip make sure you got your gauges some R134A gauges then we're gonna go ahead and tighten that on <clears throat> now right under here is the high side so we're gonna take the high side off looks like we have a little bit of oil on there Drop the high side down there, but we're gonna take the red and pull up on the clip. I put it on there, and we're gonna go ahead and screw that one tight. And then we're gonna check out the gauges. Now I'm gonna take the input line. I'm gonna get a set for Hills bottle. Just shove it down in there. <clears throat> now mine's missing the caps, so I'm gonna take some vice grips and I'm going to release the high side and the low side so as you can see it's bubbling in here got a little bit of water in there now this is safe because this is the enviro safe refrigerant there's nothing illegal about it it's safe to be in the atmosphere because it's natural gas We're just about completely drained of all of our Freon. Sometimes you want to wait like maybe five minutes after it stopped because there could be a little bit charged up in the filter and it releases maybe five minutes after. I've had that happen quite a few times. Now it's all drained out. I'm just going to take the hose out, set it aside. I'm going to put the cap on and we're just going to put this out for pickup. Now I'm going to take another tool and it's a air operated vacuum pump. Basically, you plug your air compressor hose into here and you screw the vacuum line into here and it pulls a vacuum up to 4.2 CFM, so at 90 PSI. And I'm running about 155, so this thing will probably pull it up to 6 or 7 CFM, which is really good. Um, also, you don't want to use these ones on the older, like the 85 and under vehicles, because uh, it can't handle it. All right, now we're gonna hook first the uh, hose up to it. This is gonna pull the moisture and pull a good vacuum on it. We're gonna leave both the high side and the low side open. I'll put some vice grips on here. Got it 
real tight. We're also going to just make sure that our gauges are real tight. And now we're going to hit it with some air. Now we have both a high and a low all the way open. And you can see it's starting to pull a vacuum. Now my compressor is probably going to kick on because in order to pull it all the way through. And you're just going to let it run. Okay, so I've been letting the compressor run for probably about 10-15 minutes now. And I turned down the uh, restrictor down to about uh, 85 and let it run because it keeps it at a constant 9500 PSI in there. So we're trying to drop it down. We got it down to about half a bar. And then I'm going to turn them off. I'm going to let the compressor charge up one more time. And then I'm going to open them so I can really pull it down to about negative one bar. And then I'm going to turn tighten both the high and low side. And then we're going to go ahead and fill it in. And when we fill it, we're only going to release the low side. Okay, so I have about 160 PSI in the compressor. And I'm going to go ahead and hook up the hose again. Get it started. And I'm going to open up the high and low side. And to really bring it down. Now you see how fast that one's going now. That's just going to kick back on, but I'm just going to bring it down to like negative one bar. It's almost negative one bar. Now we're going to open this dust off, and I'm just going to take one out. We don't need these, we can hold on to these. These are good for WD-40 cans and stuff. We're not gonna mess with the top part. You wanna get it, clamp it pretty low to like right where the bottom is, maybe one inch above the bottom because that's where the stronger metal is. If you clamp it here, it's gonna dent in and it might leak. So we're gonna open our package. We're going to size it up first just to make sure that it's going to fit the bottle. So pretty much opens up and on the bottom here, like I said, we're going to make sure that when we clamp it, see, and that's the perfect fit. So we don't have to worry about putting the adapter on. So get it as close to the bottom as you can. Right about there and go ahead and give it a good squeeze and that's it now we're lock and loaded as you can see it pierced the bottom and you can give it a shake shake it up get the molecules going get it colder faster and now we're going to go ahead and plug it in to the return line right here we're going to take this one off and you want to purge it first you don't want to just shoot straight air because there's air in this line so we're going to put it on there's two fittings to oh, wow, let's get it all the way on that fast. I'm gonna go quick. Hold on. Actually I'm gonna hold it upside down because the liquid's down at the bottom, so it's freezing my fingers off. There we go. So if you don't want to get cold fingers, just go ahead and tilt it like that. Now be careful when you're tightening it because you don't want to rip it off the can. So kind of hold it. And there we go. All right, now you want to hold it straight down because you want the liquid at the bottom. So we're going to set that just like that. And now we're only going to release the high side. But before we do that, we're going to purge it. We're going to crack it until we see some liquid come out of here. That means it gets all the air out of the system. Because if you go ahead and charge it, right before you do that, all the air is going to go right in your system and you're going to have nothing but, you know, less colder air. So. Let's go ahead and adjust these. So, now 
just going to crack it loose and then tighten it right back up. Until I start seeing something come out and that's it. Tighten it up. Now on the first one, we already got oil in the system, so I'm not going to oil it right now. I mean, I got plenty of oil in there. So I'm going to crack this low side and then we're going to start the vehicle once we get some pressure build up. So crack it. And be careful, try to stay around 70, 80 PSI because you don't want to blow any seals. That's freezing already. Okay, so we're around 70, 80. Clear all the tools off and we're going to start the vehicle. in there and that's it you just get a little hole right there that can's done so now we're gonna go to the next can now we're showing that we already got 32 psi of pressure in there so one can very well could have done it all right so I got my pressures about 30 on the low and I'd say about 1 170 maybe 165 ish on the high I'm probably going to go just a little bit more. This is an idle. It's blowing out about 58 degrees on the vent. And I want to get just a little bit colder at idle because it's actually we're in the shade right now. So I'm probably going to put maybe another quarter can in there. Get it up to about maybe 34, 36 PSI on the low. And I'm going to call it quits. All right. So the same procedure. I'm going to take the bottle out. Now don't worry. When you take it off, these have built-in straighter valves. So when you take the line off, it's still, if you leave it on the can, it won't leak. And we're just gonna shake it up. Remember, pierce it on the bottom. Lock it in, and that's it. Same thing, put the line on, crack it to bleed it, so you don't get any air in the system. Make sure you flip it upside down. Get it nice and tight. Set that aside, make sure the bottom bottle's straight down, you know. And we're gonna crack this one real quick. That's it. Now we're gonna crack open the low side. For about 30, 
31 right now. I'm just gonna keep feeling my line. It's getting really cold now. I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna check the air with my thermostat. So I went in and checked it with my thermostat gun, and uh, it's blowing out 59. I'm gonna try to get a little lower at idle, because it's hot here in Florida. All right guys, so here's what I got going on. I'm about 30, 32, 33 on the low side, and I'm about 190-ish, uh, 195 on the low, or the high side, I mean. And uh, pretty much, when I get on it, it'll drop down to about 25 when I hold it about two grand RPMs, and it'll get up to about 250 on the high side. Also, when I let it go, it goes up to about 34, and then comes right back down to about 30, 32. So that's good, and my temperatures inside are blowing out at idle, nope, not moving around, 51 coming out of the vent right now. So that's pretty good here in Florida with the 90 degree weather. Um, I'll show you real quick, I'm gonna use my thermo gun and uh, show you guys the results. All right, so I'm in the car. We got the vent on high, and here's the thermo gun. Let's see what we're reading. We're running at 58, 56. It's pretty cool for sitting at idle. We're not even moving. I haven't even left, drove around or nothing. So 48 degrees at idle, 47, that's really cold. Now if I go to a different vent that's closer to the coil, I'm sure it'll blow out colder. Yeah, look at that, 41, 40. Now this is Florida heat. And then if we hit this vent, which of course is gonna be the coldest, blowing out at 26 degrees. Now this is Fahrenheit, 24. We might even have a coil having to turn off because it's getting too cold to freeze the coil. So we're at 21. That's pretty stinking cold. I think she's got some leaves in here blocking it from getting to the other vents, but that's no lie, guys. Well, guys, hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to charge your AC system with a can of dust off. Don't forget, you want to make sure it says difluorethane, D-I-F-L-U-O-R-E-T-H-A-N-E. -E. I'll put it down in the description. All we have to do now is just take our gauges off, put the caps back on, and that's it. Well, if you guys enjoyed this video, please subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.